So next I'd like to introduce Dr. Hafiz Abdulaziz. Uh, Hafiz is a, uh, an outstanding researcher that we're fortunate enough to have at uh, CRE Respond. As I just share the slides, excuse me. Great. Uh, so Hafiz is an outstanding researcher here at uh, CRE Respond. Originally from Malaysia as a clinical pharmacist, he did his PhD here in Brisbane with us and returned to do some uh, further research in Malaysia before we lured him back here. And uh, we're delighted that he can, has continued to be a research fellow in our group and has led lots of fantastic studies. And in particular, over the last couple of years, he's played a, a key role in delivering uh, a major study in the area of extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO uh, to deliver it to publication. And he's got some very exciting results that I'm really looking forward to him sharing. So Hafiz, would you like to come and give your presentation? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Professor Roberts, and uh, thank you everyone for being with me. So uh, today, the title of my presentation is uh, Antimicrobials and ECMO, the way forward. Uh, specifically, we will review um, antimicrobial PK and uh, dosing optimization during ECMO. So ECMO, what is ECMO? So ECMO is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. So uh, its uh, use is to provide temporary cardiorespiratory support for patients uh, who are refractory to conventional medical management. So it acts as an important bridge to organ recovery or to long-term support devices or um, transplantation. So the key word here is ECMO is uh, supportive therapy. So it only buys time. Um, so essentially, effective drug treatment is still critical to ensure therapeutic success uh, for these patients. Sorry. So uh, ECMO, so the fundamental components of uh, ECMO uh, includes uh, oxygenator. Uh, with uh, which uh, oxygenates the blood and then uh, the blood pump, which uh, propels the uh, blood through the circuit. And then uh, we have the thermal regulatory unit um, and also the uh, large bore or ex excess uh, cannulae or conduit tubings. So, so here is a schematic representation of uh, the different ECMO modalities. Uh, the common forms is uh, VV or venovenous ECMO or VA or venoarterial ECMO. So uh, in both modalities, uh, blood is drained from the venous system. So it's uh, uh, the blue blood here. So, uh, um, so it goes through the uh, oxygenator to be uh, oxygenated. And uh, for VV ECMO, oxygenated blood returns to the venous system. And for VA, uh, it returns to uh, arterial system. So ECMO and crit uh, critical illness, uh, why? Um, so we have discussed that uh, effective drug therapy is important for these patients because ECMO is not a cure, but it's just uh, it buys time for uh, the actual uh, cardiorespiratory uh, respiratory failure to be um, resolved. So op optimal drug therapy uh, is important. For example, antibi uh, antibiotic therapy, uh, sedatives or analgesic um, therapy. So why is it challenging for these patients? So for ECMO patients are usually uh, critically ill and these patients have existing PK changes. So uh, for example, most patients who have... Uh, augmented uh, cardiac output uh, 
can demonstrate um, increased uh, clearance for some drugs or uh, known as uh, augmented renal clearance. And for some drugs, for example, uh, for vancomycin and um, renally uh, cleared drugs, for example, vancomycin and uh, beta-lactam antimicrobials, this will lead to uh, uh, suboptimal or lower plasma concentrations. So uh, what's important is ECMO here can further exacerbate these changes because it can also cause uh, uh, concentration uh, changes for some vulnerable drugs. Now, instead of one, we have two parameters affecting PK and potentially affecting um, dosing for uh, these patients who are the sickest of the sickest patients in our healthcare system. So ECMO-related PK changes. So uh, essentially, uh, it can be due to uh, circuit and drug-related factors and patient-related factors. So for circuit-related uh, factors, this can be the types of uh, oxygenators used, uh, the types of pumps, uh, the types of tubings, for example, um, PVC tubings and uh, the priming fluids used. And for drug, it can also be influenced by um, drug physical chemical characteristics. So uh, drugs with, uh, which are highly lipophilic and um, highly protein bound. So based on ex vivo data, they are more likely to be uh, secreted or absorbed um, within the uh, ECMO circuit, so um, affecting the uh, effective concentration. And uh, the patient-related factors, uh, which we have discussed just now, so these patients are critically ill and they have uh, existing PK changes. They have um, uh, increased uh, volume of distribution, uh, increased clearance, so this can uh, further affect uh, the PK of some drugs, and these patients also uh, um, receive um, other extra corporeal therapies such as uh, RRT, which can further complicate uh, antimicrobial dosing in these uh, patients. So uh, let's review uh, one ex vivo um, ECMO uh, uh, study, uh, which um, I think one of the first uh, one to demonstrate the uh, importance of physical chemical characteristics in um, uh, predicting PK changes uh, in patients um, during ECMO. So um, in this study by uh, Kiran Shekhar, so they um, describe, they aim to describe antimicrobial and ECMO circuit interactions using an, an ex vivo ECMO model. So they try to replicate what and how ECMO circuits uh, change uh, drug concentrations over time. And um, so that uh, factors, um, important factors that affect these changes can be identified to be further uh, to um, an in vivo model or clinical PK study. So the methods that they used in this study uh, is um, they compared uh, ECMO circuits versus uh, control jars. So four ECMO, ECMO circuits versus four control jars. They inject uh, some study drugs with um, variable uh, protein binding and also um, Lipophilic, um, lipophilicity profiles. And then they collect serial blood samples across 24 hours and they quantify drug concentrations over uh, several time points. So this figure here is the percentage of drug remaining in circuits. Um, so for circuits, it's uh, represented by dash lines and controls by continuous lines across uh, 24 hours. So we can see here a reduction in concentrations uh, for um, highly protein bound drugs such as uh, captraxone, uh, caspofungin, and uh, thiopentone. So uh, the reductions uh, for these drugs uh, were significant. So this shows that highly protein bound drugs um, uh, are likely to be uh, secreted within um, the ECMO circuit. So here, um, it's just a table uh, which shows the drug recovery across 24 um, hours at 24 uh, hour time point uh, with the uh, corresponding pro protein binding value and the log P. So here we can see that uh, those um, drugs that are highly protein bound, 
So uh, significant reduction in um, drug recovery um, uh, was demonstrated for caftriaxone, caspofungin, uh, thiopentone, fent fentanyl, dazolam, and for meropenem, it's uh, drug stability uh, because it's uh, unstable um, in the circuit. So based on several uh, other studies, um, which were performed by the same uh, investigators. So uh, the key points that I want to um, reiterate here is protein binding, lipophilicity, drug stability, influence concentrations uh, in ECMO. Highly protein bound drugs appear to be more significantly sequestered, but it, it's, it will be even more if uh, the drug has uh, combined uh, lipophilicity and uh, is highly protein bound. And the implications uh, of this uh, finding is uh, the choice of drugs that we uh, um, choose for patients receiving ECMO and uh, are the dosing for these patients um, different than um, um, normal critically ill patients without, uh, without uh, ECMO support. So that is uh, ex vivo data. So let's move on to uh, in, vivo in vivo data. So to confirm if lipophilicity and protein binding um, can predict PK changes during ECMO, so the same investigator um, group uh, perform a similar study, but uh, this time in uh, sheep population. So they um, have three, uh, different uh, sh sheep groups, so healthy sheep, uh, healthy sheep on ECMO, uh, and critically ill sheep. So this critically ill sheep uh, is uh, sheep with um, uh, acute lung injury. So they inject the study drugs with variable uh, lipophilicity and also uh, protein um, binding profiles. They collect blood samples across uh, 12 hours, they uh, assay the drugs and they perform non-compartmental PK analysis. So they generated um, uh, volume of distribution and um, clearance values uh, for the drugs. And then they proceed to uh, construct linear regression models uh, to predict PK parameters based on physical chemical characters, uh, characteristics, which is lipophilicity and also uh, protein binding. So these are uh, some of the results. So, so, uh, so, uh, so the drugs that were studied, the drugs that were studied uh, were meropenem, vancomycin, caftriaxone, ciprofloxacin, fluconazole, doripenem, caspofungin, and gentamicin. So HS um, uh, refers to healthy sheep. Uh, E24H refers to uh, sheep on ECMO, and SE24H refers to uh, critically ill sheep on ECMO. So we can see here for uh, drugs that are highly protein bound, uh, such as caspofungin, we can see the um, uh, separation uh, between um, uh, the different uh, groups of sheep. So the key findings from this uh, animal model is in this study, uh, Shekhart showed that for lipophilic drugs, um, in, uh, it is likely that the uh, volume of distribution is increased. And for protein-bound drugs, uh, the volume of distribution uh, and clearance um, will, uh, will uh, decrease. And these factors, lipophilicity and also protein binding, uh, so these factors are important that need to be considered when uh, dosing for patients, uh, for patients during ECMO. So uh, these are just... Um, uh, ex vivo and in vivo or preclinical data. So what's important is uh, clinical data. So for clinical pharmacokinetic um, studies, so we only have um, um, uh, low number of patients in most of uh, this study. And uh, what uh, I can conclude from these studies, uh, it is likely that modern ECMO circuit has minimal impact on PK of most drugs. And PK changes in uh, ECMO adult patients are more re reflective of critical illness rather than ECMO itself. 
But we do have uh, several studies uh, that suggest um, significant ECMO impact. Uh, so right now we have six so far. Uh, so we have uh, one for uh, boriconazole, a few for PIPTAS, uh, meropenem, uh, vancomycin, and ticoplanin. So what's interesting is, so most of the studies um, were from uh, Asian patients. So most were from uh, South Korean patients and one from uh, China. So it's an interesting hypothesis. It could be that um, uh, due to uh, body size or how they um, administer or uh, perform ECMO there, but uh, remains to be investigated. But the main message across all these studies are uh, the need to use dosing optimized for critically ill patients and the need for therapeutic drug monitoring if uh, possible and uh, available. So, uh, and then we have uh, the ASAP ECMO study. So this is the largest study uh, so far. Um, uh, attempting to describe uh, antimicrobial concentration. So the ASAP ECMO study is, uh, short form for antibiotic sedative and analgesic PK during ECMO. So we recruited uh, around um, 85 patients, 86 patients, uh, ECMO patients from seven ICUs across Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, and Switzerland. So from uh, 2012 to 2019. So we recruited patients receiving 11 antimicrobials and some uh, sedatives and analgesics uh, were included. And also uh, we will analyze their metabolites for sedatives and analgesics. So the aims uh, for the ASAP ECMO study is to describe PK and dosing advocacy through PKPD target attainment for uh, study antimicrobials. So we perform PK sampling, essentially a blood collection over a single dosing interval so each patient uh, has uh, 10 or 12 uh, sampling time points um, uh, throughout the study. So the key findings from the ASAP ECMO study, so with uh, similar to other critically ill study, so large PK variations or large antimicrobial concentration variations uh, were observed. And uh, if patients receive concomitant RRT or renal replacement therapy, this further increase uh, these variations. But the PK parameters are generally consistent with uh, previously published data of uh, patients with or without ECMO. And for dosing adequacy uh, or pharmacokinetic uh, target attainment, so we predefine the target attainment based on the position paper. So based on uh, the definition, so 70 out of 124 plasma concentration profiles achieve target exposures. So this means that uh, two out of five concentration profiles did not achieve targets and majority were suboptimal versus uh, uh, toxic profiles. But there were no difference between uh, ECMO modalities, VV or VA, or uh, between uh, receiving RRT or did not receive uh, RRT. So what's, what's concerning is more than 55% of patients receiving the common drugs during ECMO, uh, for example, osaltamivir, piperacillin, or vancomycin did not achieve uh, our predefined targets. So this is uh, essentially um, uh, some beautiful figures um, describing uh, target attainment that uh, we predefined. Uh, by ECMO mode, so VA ECMO and VV ECMO, and these are the targets. So as you can see here for cefepime, uh, so majority of the patients uh, demonstrated um, toxic concentrations, but this is um, um, as a, a strict uh, definition. And, and then if you can see here, for osaltamivir, mostly was suboptimal and vancomycin. Uh, this is surprising because um, dosing, uh, I think, would be guided by TDM, but it's still a lot of patients receive suboptimal um, dosing and also some uh, toxic concentration. Uh, for PIP, it's mostly um, 
suboptimal uh, concentrations or uh, exposure. But as you can see here, uh, some of the antimicrobials, so we only um, managed to um, get uh, small patient numbers. Uh, so for example, voriconazole, we only have one patient, linezolid, two patients. So, uh, uh, so well, we're not able to uh, really describe uh, the effect of um, ECMO or for these drugs. So these are the same, the same uh, similar figures, but this time it's uh, target attainment by um, receiving or did not receive uh, RRT. So uh, there's no difference. Uh, essentially, it's still um, the same uh, between uh, the drugs. So concomitant RRT therapy uh, in this study did not uh, influence uh, PKPD target attainment, but nevertheless, uh, still uh, poor target attainment um, uh, was seen for uh, this cohort, especially for the common uh, drugs during ECMO. So although uh, this study I think is uh, important in this um, research area, but uh, I would like to highlight some uh, limitations for uh, this study. So, uh, small sample size for some antimicrobials. Uh, we don't have non-ECMO controls. So these patients were all uh, on ECMO during uh, sampling. So we don't have non-ECMO controls. And we applied PKPD target attainment and we didn't uh, collect patient outcomes, whether it's clinical cure, mortality, or toxicity um, uh, events. And we perform non-compartmental PK analysis because of the um, uh, small sample sizes for some of the drugs. So the general conclusions from the ASAC ECMO study is uh, PK variability was huge leading to uh, variable PKPD target attainment. This is despite uh, most of the patients re uh, receive uh, dosing considered standard in the ICU uh, at the time of um, the study conduct. So pending robust uh, data, more robust data, or pending uh, new guidelines, antimicrobial dosing in ECMO patients should generally align with the recommended strategies for patients without ECMO support, but it must be optimized uh, for the patient, for that particular patient. So how, so how we can do this? Uh, so we need more robust uh, clinical data uh, that uh, aims to um, address uh, the previous limitation by uh, other studies. And we need to remember that uh, the drugs that are likely to be affected during ECMO are those that are lipophilic and uh, or highly protein-bound drugs. And dosing that aligns uh, with strategies for patients without ECMO support uh, right now should be uh, sufficient, but it needs to be optimized for that particular patient. But we need to also consider altered dosing strategies that optimize uh, exposures in critically ill patients. Uh, for example, extended um, using extended or continuous beta lactam infusion. I think uh, most of the studies that um, have been published, uh, clinical PK studies, they have simulated uh, extended or continuous beta lactam infusion in their uh, dosing simulation. And most of the studies showed that um, target attainment is, uh, can be successfully achieved uh, with uh, these altered dosing strategies. And again, uh, using therapeutic drug monitoring if uh, available. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Hafiz. That was excellent and really exciting to hear about the ASAP ECMO results, which, is, as you mentioned, are published in a very high-ranking journal and uh, have already received lots of interest from people around the world. So congratulations for that publication.